Well, that went a little bit longer than I was expecting. This whole project's gone on a lot longer than I was expecting. This started out as a friend of mine in one of my mastermind groups had said something about um, me mentioning that I shoot with lights in windows a lot of times to get the lighting effect. And he wanted to see how that was done. Well, I had just finished doing a home and I threw together a real quick editing video on that. But it really, I didn't really feel like it covered it. It just, you know, it wasn't purpose shot. It was just kind of thrown together. And um, it, it didn't make me happy is really what happened. And then a couple of days later, I got this house that we're uh, looking at now. And I thought, well, this is perfect. The realtor won't be there. The, there's no clients, it's vacant. I can spend my time and shoot some video while I shoot the pictures and make a whole tutorial that shows the lighting part of it as well as the editing part of it. And that was kind of my initial goal going in. Um, and then as I got deeper and deeper into the house, I kept seeing more and more unique and different and special lessons that I thought would be important for somebody to see or learn. And so I kept shooting and every time I saw something new, I'd shoot that and I kind of put it all together. And by the time I was done, I was looking at that and going, well, that's not one video. It's going to be a few. And then that got split from a shooting and editing video to a shooting video or a series of shooting videos and a series of editing videos. And now we're here. So that's kind of how this has progressed. Uh, again, it... It's just kind of been forming over time. So I do apologize, especially for the extremely sloppy camera work uh, in, the, in the video portion on the on-site. Um, you know, I, I, I can't believe I served this up to you and then have the, the, the balls to still call myself a professional photographer, but there you go. Anyway, what I initially wanted to do was talk about lighting and maybe the additions to lighting that I do uh, that are beyond flambient or, or beyond what most people would do. Um, and then as I got further into the video and further into what I had actually shot, um, I was seeing that this was more of, you know, a flow video, you know. It's more than just teaching you how to shoot light and edit. It's also teaching you hopefully a lot about what it is to be a photographer and what you need to do on site to prep a site, to choose your angles and to, to make good images. It, it is like being on location in not a super nice mansion, but a house like we all have to face every day, a vacant house, a, a house with nine foot ceilings, a house with not a whole lot of visual appeal. So I think maybe this strikes closer to home for what you see every day. And hopefully because of that, you can get something out of it. Uh, if not, I'm sorry for wasting your time. Regardless, um, let's get back into the video. We had just finished doing that living room, which um, I think turned out pretty good. Um, but I think the kitchen is going to turn out a lot better. So we turn and move over into the kitchen. And as you'll recall, we had done one fairly high shot for that initial shot so that we got an angle over that railing. And then we had lowered it to our standard shooting height of about halfway between the floor and the ceiling. And that's where we pick it up going into the kitchen. We need to do to our camera and lens and tripod for this shot. We needed to extend it again. Why? Why are we much higher? Because we've got flat surfaces that reach towards the camera and are very high. If we kept that camera at the same height, we'd be shooting stuff like this and we'd be seeing nothing in that crack there. Now by moving the camera up, we see a lot more of the room, a lot more of how we expect it. Um, this is generally, if you've got a tilt shift lens, this is really where you really use it. You bring the camera up even more and then tilt down and you get really good high angle peaks in between the things. But more than any other room, the kitchen is where you raise that camera up so that you can see further and further. You want um, 
let's get back to there. We're right at camera level. You know, that may not even be high enough. I think right there. And see if we had a tilt shift, we could then tilt to that. Should I bring out the tilt shift? Yeah, I'm gonna bring out the tilt shift. Let's start with though, let me show you what the shot looks like from here. Okay, so you keep in keep in your memory banks how much of that between this uh, island and the counter we're seeing, how much of the sink we're seeing and what kind of angle that is. So yeah, memorize this picture and then let me switch to my 24 and just so that you know, we are shooting at 18 right there. So for a 24, we may have to back it up a little bit too. And I think I've got some room to back it up. So yeah, don't ever be afraid of backing up. This is probably our only problem. We might bring it to right here and shoot around that pole like that and get it up high like that. That might be our shot right here. So I may, because I'm going from an 18 to a 24, I may have to move to right here, which would be right where we shot that last shot here and just swinging it this way. All right, let me set it up and we'll see what happens. That's where we're going right now. Let's go ahead and preset our f-stop to eight and then we'll put this on the camera. There we go. Okay, let's be honest. How many of you would ever think about putting your camera up that high to shoot a kitchen picture? Let's just shoot from here. You can see that's gonna be a really cool shot, but that is one fugly ceiling. That just ruins the whole shot. But that is the beauty of a tilt shift camera. I just adjust the tilt and let's bring that down. And all of a sudden we've got, come on focus, there we go. There we go, isn't that not a good shot? That shows the kitchen really, really well. And uh, it's maybe just slightly too high. I, I do see kind of a little bit of a weirdness to it. So maybe I'll bring it down just a teeny bit, but that's, I think the shot we're gonna take. I brought it down about four inches uh, and I like that a lot better. But uh, you're, obviously I showed you why we wanna see those cascading um, countertop lines. But um, I know I, there are rules and then I tell you to break the rules and then I tell you not to break the rules. I know there's, you just gotta, from experience, I guess, um, know when to follow the rules and when not to follow the rules. Um, but a general rule of guide that I use for setting the camera height, um, and I think this works generally pretty well, is um, for a, a main room, to just put that camera dead center between the floor and the ceiling. That centers you up. You've got room to crop either way if you end up needing to, and it works really well. However, when you come into a room like this, which has such a major solid flat surface at a substantial height over the floor, you need to put your lens at at least a foot, maybe two feet over um, that flat level surface, and that puts you about here you know, right about in there. Let's see where that compares to this camera. See, it's still a foot below where I'm shooting. Um, and part of that is because I'm shooting from so far back. If I shot closer and wider, I could get more of that gap too. But then things start to bend and look ugly. So we're gonna start there and we're gonna see what else we can do. All right, there we are. We're just gonna pop it into bracket mode, make sure the flash is off, hit three exposures. Oh, did you go? Yeah, you did. I have to put it. All right, so there we go. I don't think that's too bad a window pull. Let's get a little bit lower though. Take it out of three shot mode. Kind of hard. I got to look around. <laughs> there we go. I think that looks pretty good. 
Let's just do one shot so we've got a good window pull if we need it. And then now let's flash. Bingo. Um, I have not changed any light settings from when we were shooting um, th these shots. And uh, the, the trick is, and this is what I keep telling you, you know, have a light on one side, have an equal light on the other side. And if you can, fill in the middle. Otherwise, use this little bad boy to, you know, light the dark area in the background or something like that. And you're going to end up with good, flatly lit, you know, all American exposures. That's actually, that's, you know, that's exactly what everybody wants. So now let's shoot my special. Let's see, are you still on? No, you've turned off. Um, I'm gonna have to reset that. I'm gonna do one more shot with this here. There we go. That works. On to the next shot. I think it's easiest just to move right there. And let's get that shot. Here's what I dialed in. I'm keeping the same height, um, mainly because I was going to bring it down, but I really like this little swath coming in. And I really like all these lines. I think these, there's just some just gorgeous, gorgeous line work going on in here. And I love, love, love that peek into the living room from here. So I think that's a really strong, good shot here. Um, I, as you can see, have backed up a tremendous amount. I'm way back into the, almost the dining room here. Um, but with the 24, I kind of have to do that, but um, it gives a really good, clean look to the kitchen. So now let's talk about lighting this. Um, I'm gonna leave that there. That did its job, it worked. I can't see it from that camera position. That's good. I'm going to take this, this looked really dark from, to me when I was looking at it. So I'm gonna put it right here to like this room. And then B, obviously I'm gonna to have to hide or close B's hiding spot. Um, maybe I'll put B right there. I think that's what I'll do. So we're back, ready to shoot. Let's get three exposures, turn off the flash. Now let's bring the exposure down. I'm not gonna break it down a whole lot. Um, I really like where this window is right now. I think that's exactly where it needs to be. And let's see what, let's just see where we are with flash. Oh shit. Well, that's dummy me. I do that sometimes. Let's take it out of three and let's, um, it looks like B did not go off. Um, really happy with that sliver into the living room. So that's done. Calling that good. B, I've been having problems with it. Comes on and off. I don't know if you've noticed that or not, but I'm not seeing any fill from in here. So what I'm gonna do is consider B dead. So now I'm shooting with two light see it turned itself off gonna just consider that i'm shooting with two lights and it means i'll have to, have to shoot more images <clears throat> but i can make it work there you can see why i put cages around my 8200s i drop everything that's why b's not working i drop it all the time all right let's see what this does this should give us a better kitchen itself. <laughs> there we go. I don't think that that was better. I think C might have turned itself off. Also, let's take a look. Yes, it did. All right, off, on. Okay, there we are. Now you see why I tilt it this way. If it falls this way, it's gonna be fine between that 
and uh, the, the rubberized magnetic holder for the top. That should work just fine. Now, can we do it? Yes, we can. Okay, that's a kitchen I like. Let's compare that to the one before. See, just too dark. Um, look on this sidewall too, look. Whoops. Before, when the flash wasn't working, see the discoloration? Whereas now with the flash, we've got clean color. So I'm gonna go ahead and do it again, and I'm gonna take C, but I'm gonna take it down uh, about a stop. Yeah, there we go. That looks really, really good. Oh, look at that. We can see all the way back into the back um, bedroom. I am going to put a light back in there. And that will be our third flash exposure for this room. We've got one that really, that was all I could use. We've got the one we just took, which makes this room work. And then I'm just gonna open this, put this right here, and that will light this whole area. Um, I have a couple of other flashes in the car. I'm thinking about pulling those in to take over for B. I have a second B somewhere too, but I don't have it with me. Um, so, I don't know. Be prepared. There we go. That back area looks really good now. Let's compare that to the shot before. There, see that? So see what I did? I looked at every shot. See, in this one you can see that this sucks. But we go back to that first one. And that looks really good. So anyway, basically you just look at each shot, put the pieces together and light each different area. And then all you have to do, especially if, um, if your areas are just doorways like that, you know, they're just straight lines. Those are easy mats to cut and it's easy to just layer those. So that's my suggestion. So from here in the kitchen, I would pretty much just continue shooting the way you would normally shoot. We'll be shooting tighter shots like of the stove, of the sink, and things like that. Not these big grand vistas across three or four rooms or anything like that. So you can probably do those much the same way that you do now. Um, so I'm not going to really go into how I shoot those as much as um, maybe I'll, I'll throw up a couple of copies or... Um, show you what I did shoot. Um, but now, yeah, that the, the parts I wanted to show you about this kitchen are done. And now it's just, you know, doing the regular stuff. Um, I'm seeing a shot right now. This is unfortunately the way I work. I'm doing one thing and then I see another shot. I'm like, Ooh, I'm gonna get that. But I'm seeing a, a tight shot, maybe not an important shot for a house like this, but for an Airbnb, a, a real luxury um, shoot, I would definitely shoot this, um, a little detail shot. But yeah, I'll shoot three or four more here in the kitchen and then on to the master. Let's, um, let's call this a day on this one shooting wise though. Hey, this is Dave and I came back because I was setting up a new shot. Um, this was the shot I was setting up, and I, I thought there was a, a good lesson to be had here, and that is upper right. Look at that. See that? There is so little left of that corner not showing that to leave it like that is, in my opinion, bad comp. So I looked at that, and I said, you know what? Let's just raise our little bad boy tilt shift just a little and then there see how much better that looks then i looked over here and i thought you know what that makes that just a little tight there too so i raised it just a teeny bit more and there our comp is roughly the same but I think we've improved it a tremendous amount by continuing that cabinet there and putting just a little space above that light so that we can see the thing. If we had on that light, you know, been 
like that. I just think that would have been bad. So give it a little space. And then there we go. I think that, um, I think this is fine right here. That's enough of a space. We see the washer, the water heater. Um, here, because of these other three, I don't mind cutting that off. We know what that is because of everything else we're seeing there. So I think, I think by and large, that's a good comp for that picture. By the way, I'd point out that that is a 24 millimeter on there still. So if, if you're like, I need a 14 to shoot interiors. No, you don't. No, 18 works great. 19, 20, you know, they all look really good. 14, really, really bathrooms. I use a 14 in a bathroom, that's about it another thing I would do I don't know if you noticed in the last shot but I had that light in the window right there which I'm going to shoot but I decided to move it out of the shot um, so that I could get a clean um, ambient so I put it on top of the refrigerator well I didn't look through the camera before I shot it and I actually shot it like this and realized that was there um, one of the really, I think, good arguments for shooting in order and always shooting in the same order is I shot my three like this with that light there. But um, now I'm going to take it out and I'm going to shoot three more. If you continue to keep shooting in the same manner, you know, like you keep shooting your brackets of three until you get the good one, you always know that you're third bracket is your best one so you know probably everybody else does that anyway and I'm just being stupid but I, I made that mistake and I wanted to throw that out first off yes I make mistakes all the time but I clean them up while I'm here I don't worry I don't I could have fixed that easily in Photoshop but it's also a good lesson now with regard to the flash version of the picture I put it back up and I don't care that it's in the shot because I gonna leave C there, D there. I'm gonna shoot that bad boy. Yep, that's fine. And oh yeah, oh I can see that. That looks really bad, Dave. No, nope, no, nope, no, nope. watch this. Now I can use one of these shots to take the um, flash out of the other. And it's no big deal. There we go, see? That's clean and usable. Here's the reason things like B break down a lot or like B or whatever, because I do stupid things like this. This is what I'm doing now, and I'm doing this because I really like the angle. I think everybody's seen, you know, this shot, and it works really good. Here it is being set up here. Um, problem is, like with the 24, you have to get back a little ways, you know, to get the ends of this, and that puts me in the stairwell. But for me, it's all about the shot, and to me, that shot really, really works. Um, I'm going to play with the tilt here a little bit um, because I also think um, I think I'm going to show you a cool thing about a tilt shift. That's what I'm doing. There's a little lever right here and by pushing that back I can turn I can rotate the tilt shift. Yeah. There, see it? And that means I not only tilt shift up down, but I can tilt shift to the side. So we started fairly centered. Let's see. And now, see, we go this way. I think that's too much. Boy, right there. And well, you say, why would you want to do this? Well, you'd want to do this so that you can. Um, have the center of the frame still be that, which is 
you know, the way the shot is set up, but show a different part of the shot because you want to show that. It's, um, it's just a really cool little trick you can do. So there we go. There's a fun use of the tilt shift. Well, I really pushed myself into a hole with this one. To really get the exact shot I needed, I had to push this back super far. I'm so glad we have these tilt things. I had to come back far enough that I could get, I could complete this part. Let me focus, there we go. So I can complete this and not, and also show that and get the angle that I wanted. And I think, I think that framing ends up being exactly what I want. Now I just need to level it and shoot it, and I'm gonna do that off camera because I need to really pay attention here. Whenever I do a shot like this, there's one thing you really have to watch out for too. Um, when you're shooting dead on to the, um, the stove and the microwave, let me show you what happens. Yeah, this is, you know, shooting dead on, what happens? Come on, there we go. Yeah, your reflection shows up right there every single time. That's how you know you're shooting dead on because your reflection is right there. See, there I am. Hi, bye. So always make sure that you use a time delay, press the button, and then walk out of the shot so that you get a clean reflection. Reflections are a bitch. Always watch for them. Still not done with this kitchen. To me, kitchens are the soul of the house. They're, they're, I think, the most important thing in selling a home. And the more features there, there are, the more you need to shoot it. So let's go over my shot list here, just so that you've got it. We started here with a, a wide shot, essentially, of what this whole place was about. And that put it all, I think, into context, hopefully. My next shot was from here, which gave us an alternate view. I think with two opposing views like that, you can really put together a space. Then I went to here and I did my little artsy fartsy shot. Not a necessary shot at all, honestly. I did that for me. I did that because, yeah, because I wanted to. Then I went ahead and I did another one here, just in case I didn't want to include the artsy fartsy shot. It is important to show this, the this whole front and this wave of, of storage behind. So that's really important, I think. Then I got a nice, much tighter shot here that put all this into perspective. And then I, this is just me personally, I always get a shot of sink. Cause to me, you spend a lot of time there. You wanna see what that looks like. Generally too, I'll shoot it like this because I think that, that shows it off better. It's not the greatest shot in the world, but it is something I always do. And now you can see I'm over here because again, I've shown the appliances, I've shown this, I've shown this. Um, this is in a couple of shots. Um, I don't generally feature it, but it's in a couple of shots. But I wanna get a shot here that shows how all this goes together. Um, because again, I think storage, super important when you're looking at a house. You wanna know what's there. And seeing this wall of cabinets, I think says a lot about what some of the things this house has to offer. And then I will end it with a shot from here. And then I'll mix up the order of the pictures. So, you know, I may start with that one, may go to the sink, then that one, then that one, just so that you're bouncing around. Um, but I did want one from over there because this, this room is kind of lost. And I wanted to make sure we knew where it was in the house. And plus, look at that view. Look at these windows. This is, you know, something I think is going to be key. I'll probably shoot a shot from here at some point and then light that black hole um, so that we can show all this. Because I think this is, 
you know, that's our job. We're here ultimately not for, not to shoot that really cool tilt shift shot right here, but to sell the home. And that means showing all the things that it has to offer and, and putting it together in a way that's pleasing. And I think sometimes, well, especially I lose sight of that and I get all excited about certain pictures that may or may not actually sell the house. So always ground yourself and get back to what you're supposed to be doing, which is selling the house. Getting back to the tilt shift and well, this shot that I'm trying to get here, let me show you something else really cool. So we're up high enough that we're not shooting level with this counter. So we don't have this giant aircraft carrier look there, but I still think that's a little bit too much, um, too much this and not enough this. So normally, you know, we adjust this and we go up and down. And while that's okay, if I tilt this over to the side and rotate it a bit, and it's hard to do with one hand, but look at this. Whoop, don't do that. Look what happens when I do this. Maybe turn it a little bit more. Um, sorry, I need to hit the release. Turn it a little bit more that way. Now I've got the entire counter all the way up, including the ceiling. And I think a much more interesting and fulfilling shot. All right, so there we go. We've wrapped the kitchen. Now on to the dining room and seeing what's going on there. Also, we will be editing those three pictures that we set up in the kitchen in another video and you'll see how I put all those different flash frames and ambient frames together to get some pretty decent looking images. Hope you like it and have a great day. May your next shoot be your best shoot.